certainly is a blessing. I used to always say to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God has smiled on us again. Amen. Give us another opportunity. <clears throat> Let us come and give him praise. I just want to thank our pastor. We have a great pastor. I want to thank him for reminding me. <laughs> Amen. I hadn't looked at our calendar. He told me on Friday you're up Sunday. I said, oh, really? He said, yes. I said, oh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Sunday we have, <clears throat> he's a great man of God, and it's not because of all the degrees and things that we may have, because of his humility. Amen. Amen. He is one humble man who is among you, and uh, you ought to thank God <clears throat> uh, for Pastor Wallace and Sister Wallace. Amen. Amen. I say as Pastor Bird and I had fellowship for many years, and I'd known him before I came to Central, of course. And uh, <clears throat> a certain day, uh, we thank God for him, and and I want to thank God for Central, <clears throat> for each of you. Amen. 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 For the love you've shown, for your support, because we all go through our troubles, right? <clears throat> Amen. Somebody said life is not easy. We go through our storms. We go through our trials. <clears throat> but one thing we remember, that we have his promise. Amen. Amen. God has said you're not going through it alone. Amen. This is something that you're not able to do anyway. And Satan, he has given us a promise that he would be with us. Amen. So we are grateful today, eternally grateful for God, for what he's done. I have been preaching over 70 years, and I'm now approaching 90 years old. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And <clears throat> sitting there, <clears throat> I thank God. Amen. For what he has done. I thank him for keeping me, for watching over me. We all have gone through many storms. <clears throat> many trials, but I thank God that he is in the midst of the storm, amen, of whatever you're going through. So <clears throat> we're grateful today, and we're not going to hold you long today, but <clears throat> we want you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, and We'd like for you to turn to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And beginning with the 22nd verse, if you have it, say amen. And straightway Jesus <clears throat> constrained his disciples to get into the ship <clears throat> and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had <clears throat> sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was alone. <clears throat> but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed it with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, of course, that's about six o'clock in the morning, you just said you calendar, in the fourth watch, of the night, Jesus went into, went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. <clears throat> but straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. 
It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, it be you, bid me come into, bid me come unto thee on the water. <clears throat> and he said, Come. And when Peter was coming down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. Is there any water walkers here today? <laughs> he walked on the water to Jesus. <clears throat> but when he saw the wind boasting, <clears throat> he was afraid, and he began to sink, and he cried out and said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And then the war then, and they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a true, thou art the Son of God. Amen. <clears throat> Would you... Would you look at someone, catch somebody by the hand this morning and say, Lord, Lord. <laughs> amen, save me. Save me. <laughs> yes. Amen. Now, somebody may say that I'm saved, but remember, salvation is a process. You're being saved. <laughs> if you have faith, you'll get there. Amen. As Jesus, the story says, as he went up into the mountain to pray, this was a test for the disciples. Went up in the mountain to pray, and while he was in the mountain, the disciples was out on the sea. He was watching them. They was out on the sea. And that night, about 6 o'clock in the morning, at night the wind was blowing, <clears throat> That was a storm. Remember, folks, we all have to go through the storm. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but as the storm was raising, Jesus was watching them, and he came down out of the mountain, walking on the sea. And as most people see that, they say, well, it's a ghost. This is, well, who's that? He's walking on the sea. They didn't imagine what was happening. But when Jesus said, it's I, be not afraid. Amen. Amen. We all have those moments. Amen. Amen. But then Peter, the outspokenman, said, Lord, is this you? Bid me come. I have to give him credit. Because the man had faith. He jumped out of the boat, walking on water. <laughs> the storm began. And then, you know, the wind, trouble come, trials come. The wind began to blow and toss. And then that's when it happened. Peter began to sink. And he cried out with the voice of the ages, Lord, save me. We thank God that we have a Savior. Amen. Amen. We thank God this morning for Jesus. For somebody said, Jesus save. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to hold you long, but <clears throat> one of the members, of, as a member of the clergyman, as a pastor, we learned that preaching a sermon that trying to please everyone. Amen. It's like walking on water. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Pleasing everyone. It's like trying to walk on water. After delivering a careful sermon, a pastor <clears throat> of a church, and you know, the people usually line up, they shaking his hand and said, that was a great message, pastor. 
That was a great message. But there was a visiting pastor there. He like got in line, he passed by and he walked by. He said, that was a terrible sermon. <laughs> and then waiting to get back in line again, as the people were saying. <laughs> he came up to him, he said, you know that sermon that you preached, I've heard that, those real, the thing you said, I've heard them ever since I was a child. <clears throat> well, the man tried to redeem himself, and he said, don't pay him no attention. Don't pay that man no attention. He's not too bright. <laughs> well, just repeat what you hear everybody else says. There are times in our life and all of our lives as a preacher and as a minister, the effort to preach the right sermon, shrine is like walking on water. <clears throat> We know that there's times in our life, and yours and mine, amen, there are times when the effort to do the right thing, to do a good job, or whatever we're called to do, is very difficult. Sometimes it's frustrating, amen? Amen. It's frustrating, like walking on water. Trying to be a good father, trying to be a good Mother, be good parents, trying to raise our children. Amen. It's difficult. It's not easy trying to do this right thing, understanding, trying not to hold a grudge, trying to cope with the system. Amen. That we're living in, or trying to keep some awful habit. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Amen. Not to somebody say maybe be trying not to take that drink, first drink, trying to not smoke that first cigarette. Amen, somebody. Amen. Sometimes it's trying to do the right thing is like walking on water. Amen. It is something that we all have to face. But remember that on Christ is a song saying, the solid rock I stand. Amen. Amen. No other ground than sink and stand. We have to put our faith, our trust in Jesus. Peter experienced the sensation as trying to move toward Jesus on water. Because as Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to concentrate on the storm. The wind was blowing. And he began to sink. That's when it all happened, doesn't it? Amen. He cried out with the voice, says, Lord, save me. As he began to sink. We know that Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, saying, How little is your faith, Peter? Why did you falter? Why did you doubt? Amen. But Peter allowed himself to begin to sink down into the depth because he had lost what? He had lost faith. Jesus said, that's when it happened, isn't it? When everything is going well and everything is going our way, things come easy, doesn't it? <laughs> but when the storm rises and when the trouble comes and trials come, amen, that's when the burden gets hard and it, it gets difficult. But we have to remember. We have to remember, remind ourselves to trust the Lord. Amen. To have faith in him. The disciples had to learn to work at a seemable, most seemable, impossible task. God gave them to perform under the light of what? Faith. Faith. If you only had grain in the seed, he told us, of a mustard seed, you could move mountains. Amen. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. They had to learn that they were never alone. That Christ has promised us that he would never bend us. He will never leave us alone. However frightful the situation may be, 
They had to learn that the way to fulfillment and Jesus' promise is the way of the cross. Say to somebody, say, at the cross, where I first saw the light. They had to learn that to, to want to come, Easter come first, and then Good Friday. That the cross is first, then the resurrection. Amen. Satan said the disciples had to learn to call, that they had called them out of faith, and that is to obedience. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will do what I say do. Abraham, my father, is one of the faith that he obeyed. They didn't really understand that call until after the crucifixion. They really didn't understand, even though he had taught them. They had seen him turn people away because they made, took that marriage as an excuse. Amen. Those many used death in their family excuse. Our everyday work needed, doing our everyday job as an excuse. All are good excuses, but Jesus turned them away and demanded unconditionally obedience. Regardless how the task is or how hard it is, he said, you have to obey. We have to learn that. We have to learn that. Obedience unto the will of God, when even though God is asking us to do the seemingly the impossible, and that is to walk on water. Amen. <clears throat> but we know that we have to learn to such a Paul wrote, the Apostle Paul wrote as we move through us, we realize that they were being called to themselves. You can decide for Christ, or you can decide against Christ. That is anyone's choice because we are free moral agents. But if you decide for Christ, then you have no other choice than as he called you. He called the disciples, and he's calling each one of us, and that is to uncondition, not on a condition, unconditioned obedience. Obey him. Regardless to the circumstances, obedience, even until death. Amen. <clears throat> There are people who tell us that it doesn't make any sense about talking about Christ's death. What about his life? Hey, that makes the difference. It doesn't make sense. Somebody said may realize that, but it is in his death, in the death of the cross. Christ died on the cross. On the crucifixion, God's love is focused most intensively. Amen most adherent to the most fascinated, most directly, it is the cross. <laughs> Amen. It is where he died on the cross. He gave his life. That is where we will understand today the center of the Christian faith, and that is the cross. If he hadn't died on the cross, what would have happened to Peter? What would have happened to all of us? Because it's his death. He died that we might live, that we may have eternal life, and that is through his name. There's nothing more God can show us, amen, of his infinite love, nothing else but his death, amen. He has, we have to consecrate on as a human being. He died on the cross. He died for every sin that you commit, past, present, and future. That he was nailed to the cross. And no one does not say, and that's where God showed his love to us. He gave heaven's best for us. He came all the way down. He passed the rank of angels. He passed. He came down. He embodied himself in a babe. How great God is. We see him walking 
and talking among men. He showed us through his life. He demonstrated it to his life that he loved us unconditionally. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, you can put your name, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Amen, but have everlasting life. He showed it by his life that he lived, he demonstrated it by the life he lived. Now, many of you may remember the lines of my fair lady. She turned to Mr. Higgins and said, Professor Higgins and said, don't talk on stars burning above. If you love me, show me. Don't waste my time. Show me no rhyme. Don't waste my time, but show me that you love me. Don't talk of stars above. Christ showed us. Amen. Not only in words, but he showed us in deeds what he did. You watch him. As he stood at the grave of Lazarus, as he stood there, he said that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He demonstrated it in his life. And I apologize to the composer, but God is saying to us today, don't talk about love. Don't talk about hope and heaven above, but show me by your ways and action that you love me. And Edward Averly's escape, Debbie Kikirin is playing the part of a wealthy Englishman. And in this play, it shows that despite of the age of what you're in, he said, I look around and I see so many people that need help. This is why one 90-year-old man, Deborah Kim, give her sister-in-law a small coin by coming, giving to her, buying a little gift for somebody that is poor. And she smiled and said, that is why the poor is so useful because you don't always have to be extravagant. <laughs> you remember how extravagant he was? God, he who was rich, amen, somebody. He who was rich, for our sake he became poor that we through his providence may be rich. <laughs> One day the angels saw the mighty creator that he stepped down from heaven's throne. He stepped down, he came down. He came all the way down to this earth and he took upon himself human flesh and he died. He gave his life that we might live. Amen. 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 We all learn how to experience the feeling of a situation of being extravagant. But God said to see the cross, to see how extravagant God's love for us, that he gave his best for us. Are you willing to give your best for him? Lay down his life. And he said, show me no song, read me no rhyme. Don't waste my time, but show me that you love me. That was a man who attracted to Jesus in the gospel, being coming to church for several Sundays. He'd been coming to church for several months. He'd been coming, and he'd come in there. And he, he came up and he asked him, like a person come up to them, ask him, how much? And when he said, your life, he went back into the caboose, and he never came out anymore because he seemed like it was too much. Is it too much for you to lay down your life, to give up something that you think is important? 
A lay aside thing that you have, you think is important to help somebody else. And somebody said, if I could help somebody as I call have it alone, my life would be in vain. Jesus invited Peter on to walk on water to come to him because he was convinced in the midst of the trial that Jesus had asked the impossible. That is the way of all of us feeling when Jesus called us out of the caboose, uh, to our ministry, to our work that we have to do. We feel some like mission impossible. But you have to decide for Christ or you have to decide against Christ. If you decide to follow Christ and you decide for him, amen, you have to be willing to even do the thing that you seem impossible. Love. And he said, show me his command. And that is, show me that you love me. I said to you today, through a life of experience and through all of our storms and through all of our trials, God is asking us something to follow me. Regardless of how it seems or how difficult life may seem, we must keep our eyes on the cross and keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the star pole and glory because someday we're going to have to face him. Some glad morning when it's all over. Amen. Some glad morning when the wicked shall cease from trouble and the weary shall be at rest. We're going to take my flight to a land where we'll never grow old. A land where we'll never grow old. And we thank God for Jesus because he has paved the way. Show me, don't talk of love. Don't talk about peace. But he's saying, show me that you love me. Show me by your ways and actions. Show me by your care for one another. Show me love one another. Amen. He said, love one another as I have also loved you. A greater love. Amen. It's time to just shout about it. Amen. Greater love had no man than this. Somebody say amen. amen. That he'll lay down his life for his friend. He said, I made it lay down my life that I might take it up again. And we thank him today. For someday, he said, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. He pulled off the glow clothes, grave clothes he was clothed and gone with the righteousness. Amen. amen. God bless you. And we thank you.